Franchise Pictures was an independent film company founded in 1998 by Andrew Stevens and owner of nightclubs and dry cleaners A. Eli Samaha, whose strategy was to line up financing for pet film projects of big stars that the major studios didn't want and other films. Much of their output was negatively reviewed and or bombed at the box office. Later, they filed for Chapter 11 in 2007 amidst a lengthy lawsuit over investment fraud that Samaha would not be cleared of until 2011. In their wake, Franchise Pictures left some of the worst internationally released films of the early 2000s on 50p DVD shelves in Kexes all around the country. Let's watch some, shall we? It's the year 3000 AD. The Earth is lost to the alien race of Cyclos. Humanity is enslaved by these gold-thirsty tyrants, whom are unaware that their man-animals are about to ignite the rebellion of a lifetime. Fuck's sake. Franchise pictures hit a major bump after relative success with the Bruce Willis vehicle The Whole Nine Yards with the wildly infamous Battlefield Earth, which was slammed by critics went drastically over budget due to the company's embezzlements and marketing and grossed only $29.7 million at the box office out of an overall $73 million budget. Franchise's later lawsuit, which would bankrupt them eventually, was over accusations of purposefully inflating the film's budget. Described by Travolta himself as the Schindler's List of science fiction films, Battlefield Earth's long and outright hilarious production history basically boils down to, despite what everyone thinks, most people in Hollywood considering Scientologists to be a bunch of freaks, and what's worse, not a viable intellectual property, and therefore no major studio in their right mind, ever producing something akin to propaganda for the cult. Luckily for Travolta, who had just failed to convince Quentin Tarantino to direct the film, that Franchise Pictures was neither a major studio or indeed in their right minds as they had essentially scammed some German investors with a package deal in order to finance what finally became the Roger Christian directed and the too many redrafts to credit written Battlefield Earth for the new millennium. Now given the Scientology rub and Travolta's fanatic zeal during the marketing campaign it's easy to see why critics at the time saw all this as a gross and highly ill-advised vanity project, because it was, and therefore see the film itself as a poorly produced, wonderfully acted, exceptionally cheap looking dumpster fire, because it is. However, accusations of the film being dull are only warranted if you're looking for a serious film experience here, which 20 million memes later would be beyond expectations. The film can only be judged realistically in 2020 by how hilarious it is as that's where its entertainment value has now been reported to lay. Well let's run it down. The CGI is cheap as balls, the matte paintings are 20 years out of date, the Dutch angles and colour filters are really that awkward and the acting is the most genuinely entertaining aspect of the entire movie. Travolta was, and still is, a true believer in this production and that's wholly evident as he leaves everything on the frame and nothing for his self-respect. Combine his ridiculous makeup and graduate level or Marlon Brando level British accent and you have a truly absurd, truly camp presence that is a gift to us all. Okay, screenplay. Terrible. Most novel adaptions run the risk of having dialogue sound completely overwrought and utterly fucking retarded. And let me tell you boy about this El Nance Hubbard. Featured in Battlefield Earth is the distinctively American combination of bullshit pseudoscience and exceptionalist ideology and such is born a British Connolly uprising framed within the post-civil rights pre-Reagan self-help mysticism of the late 70s. In short, it's truly retarded and uninspired and I expected nothing more from the Hubbard. Battlefield Earth is camp as all hell, it is cheap, it is at times meandering, and whilst meme-worthy in short bursts, the overwhelming mediocrity of the special effects and the storytelling make it a near unwatchable film to sit through from bell to bell, as it struggles hard to maintain your attention. Maybe not for a solo watching, but I am guaranteed certain that at the right party, with the right people, this shit be lit!
A New York City detective investigates mysterious deaths occurring 48 hours after users log on to a site named Fear.com. Fear.com is only a franchise picture in post-production and distribution only, but the film is so shit it would be impossible to mark where their influence begins and ends, but most indeedy, the trademark artless presentation infects every frame. The screenplay is a ghost story combined with a serial killer thriller tied together with post Y2K hysteria. It's a jumbled mess and not even all of the flashy non-linear editing in the world can hide the fact that many of the storytelling and cinematic devices of Fear.com feel 30 years out of place even at the time of its release. Creepy little girls, eyeballs, hilarious sound design, Germans, it's all here. The most cliched horror imagery you can imagine clashing clumsily with extreme bondage imagery and snuff film fantasy, because of course children, the go home here is, all kink leads to murder. Sorry I have little to talk about, but Fear.com really is that dull and disturbing. Fear.com is devoid of any real scares, any atmosphere and any impressive qualities not counting its stateside theatrical release. The blandest ripoff of Seven you could ever hope to imagine. Tasked with destroying each other, an FBI agent and a rogue DIA agent soon discover that there's a much bigger enemy at work. Ballistic is infamous for still being the worst reviewed movie on Rotten Tomatoes, with a listed 115 reviews and not a single one being positive. No other film on the site with more than 100 reviews has a 0% rating. Personally, now that I know more about franchise pictures, I think this had to do with the studio's involvement with Battlefield Earth more than anything regarding the film's quality, because it really isn't that bad. Not to say that Ballistic is a good film, because it's not. For Warner Brothers release, financing the distribution, not production, that's important, I can see why this would be a shock to the senses. The story is a walking corpse filled with contrivance and convenience that none of the cast really had any chance to pull it off in the first place. Which is not at all surprising because, believe it or not, Ballistic started life off as a Dolph Lundgren vehicle from the 1980s that never got past the spec script. Fuck knows why this is the case, but there you go. So, the story is garbage and not worth a damn, but the action is a much more complicated story. Possibly. Director Chaos had the film taken away from him after his first rough cut and was re-edited under the supervision of the Goodfellas running franchise. This would explain the obnoxious overlaid soundtrack and nonsensical video editing pretty neatly, which dirties up what is some truly impressive stunt work. Sound design, when we can hear it over the techno, is also solid and punchy. Uh, what else is good? The wardrobe is slick with some nice fashion on display. There is some good cinematography in here. Actually, that's it really. Story's still shit, and I think that was a problem from day one that was never rectified because I don't think a lot of people really cared. So, in conclusion, Ballistic is an average Hollywood action film butchered by wise guy producers and severely impaired by a terrible, outdated screenplay. At times, it does look good and sound good, but the overall product is a mess, and what's worse, it's not even bad enough to be enjoyed that way. The film just doesn't make any sense, and the espionage plot is lazily structured beyond all irony and agony. Ballistic, the producer's cut that is, is nothing good for but a background noise movie and a chintzy relic of an era of Hollywood action filmmaking that is now long behind us. So, amongst the debris, what is there to salvage? Battlefield Earth is an astounding vanity project and is truly one of the most embarrassing star vehicles of all time. Fear.com is one of the most dull and cliche ridden horror films that I have ever seen and Ballistic X vs Sever is an utter salvo of producer interference, Gen X hyper style and below Steven Seagal screenwriting. Good luck with those. I'm out.